Good afternoon, book lovers. It's Robert Boyd with another book report for you. This time we're looking at Ilya Kavakov, The Man Who Flew Into Space from His Apartment by Boris Groys. And this is a, uh, a book about a single artwork, an installation by Russian artist Ilya Kavakov. And Boris Groys is a uh, art critic who was born in 1947, also Russian. Uh, and he was present when uh, the Moscow conceptualist we're having apartment shows and actions in public parks and in Moscow, Leningrad and other locations, all of which flew completely under the radar of the Soviet Union. They were completely unofficial and they really were not known by official Soviet bureaucracy. And he wrote about them in, in various Samizdat publications and uh, immigrated to the West in 1981. Ilya Kabakov is an artist uh, born in 1933, and he was a member in good standing in the Soviet Artist Union, where he worked as a, uh, a children's book illustrator, and he was a really good illustrator, too. And I think the fact that he was a storyteller is important, as you will see later. But he became associated with uh, the growing conceptual art movement in the Soviet Union in uh, the 70s. People like painter Eric Bulakov, or uh, the collective known as Collective Action, which included Andre Monastisky and poet Lev Rubinstein, whose books I have read and are really good. Um, the the work itself is is a room sized installation, uh, and it's uh, literally the interior of the protagonist's apartment, uh, the protagonist who flew into space from his apartment. And uh, yeah, on the walls are, it's cluttered. It's a cluttered interior. On the walls are images from sort of Soviet space propaganda, as well as images of drawings of his apparatus that he used to launch himself into space. His apparatus is remarkably simple. It's a giant slingshot. He slingshot himself into space. And if you look up in the uh, installation, there's a hole in the ceiling. It's not clear when you're looking at it whether the, he, he he sawed a hole in the ceiling, or whether he knocked the hole in the ceiling when he slingshot himself through through it into space. And that lack of clarity about what actually happened is part of a uh, part of the story here. Um, and the book uh, book includes, of course, many photos of the installation and pre preliminary drawings, but also includes a lot of Soviet era postcards about space flight with uh, various heroes from the Soviet Union's space program, like Konstantin Tsiolkovsky and Yuri Gagarin. Um, and uh, presumably uh, the hero of this work, the man who flew into space, was uh, inspired by such propaganda. And you can't go into the room, you can only look into it. So it's not, a, it doesn't completely envelop you like, uh, say, Kapokov's gigantic installation that Marfa does. Um, Groy suggests that the metaphor of the amateur co cosmonaut, the unofficial cosmonaut, shall we say, is similar to Kapokov's own position as an unofficial artist. He writes, All the same, the hero of this installation did not appropriate and channel this energy in the same way a proper cosmonaut would have done. He doesn't he wasn't appointed either by the state or society to serve an as an embodiment of the collective dream and to orbit the earth on behalf of his fellow citizens, representing society as a whole. No, the artist is an illegitimate cosmonaut. I like that phrase. The artist is an illegitimate cosmonaut. He appropriates, privatizes, and deploys global utopian energies entirely for his own ends, without previously having been selected and authorized by society. So the room left behind by Kabakov's hero looks more like a crime scene than a laboratory where a genius has been at work. And I think that idea that it looks like a crime scene is, is a good one because when you see it, you don't know exactly what happened. You can, you can deduce that he used a slingshot to sling himself into space, but like I say, you can't tell whether he sawed a hole in the ceiling or if he... Uh, if he broke the ceiling. Um, and so 
Kavakov is, is an unofficial cosmonaut. Bor Groys goes further than just that metaphor, even though I think that metaphor is a really good one, to suggest the cosmic origins of the protagonist's light. There was a philosophical movement in uh, Russia starting in the 19th century called Cosmism. And Cosmism was started by a ph philosopher that Groys references named Nikolai Fedorov. Fedorov died in 1903. And he had a a belief that everyone would be re resurrected from their death, everyone in history, via new technologies that didn't yet exist. So it was a very positive, forward-looking uh, uh, philosophy. And uh, he wasn't the only one who, who believed this. And he was a highly influential philosopher. One of, the, uh, one of his followers are, of cosmism uh, was uh, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky. Who I mentioned earlier. He was a pioneer in the Russian space program, mostly because he was a pioneer in rocket science. He was one of the first people to work out the equations of how a rocket should fly. Um, but he also believed in immortality. And uh, he uh, worked on the Russian on Russian rockets, I think to the 50s or so, by when he died. But he's definitely a pioneer and someone who would have influenced the man who flew into space, although the man who flew into space did not use rockets. So Groys suggests that he has these utopian ideas believed by Fedorov and Tsiolkovsky, but they, uh, that Kabakov distanced himself from them. Kabakov was an observer. He's like a novelist who doesn't want, who should not be overly associated with his character, even though, as I said, there's a, a, a relationship of them, of the unofficial audit, artist and the unofficial cosmonaut. Royce wrote, Kabakov's art is emphatically narrative-driven and illustrative, and as such, is distinctly different from the majority of Western art today. In the minds of Western modernists, the image has to speak for itself. The silent contemplation of the image should be enough to persuade the viewer of its value. The artist of the classical avant-garde saw the eradication of literary components of art as their highest aim. But Kabakov, he worked as a book illustrator, so he his his day job, his official Soviet job was to was literally to illustrate narrative works. And Groys continues, the whole circle of Moscow conceptualists in the 70s, including Kabakov, consisted of artists and poets who wanted to make a narrative connection between words and images. This, in part, accounted for the distinct differences between the practice of the Moscow conceptualist and the Western conceptual art of the day. Moscow conceptualists didn't want to be reiterating that, that irksome question, what is art? And certainly, that question is a question that would come up again and again when looking at art by Ilya Kabakov. But I think Kabakov is a great artist, and I, I strongly support the idea of uh, narrative art. So that's Ilya Kabakov, the man who flew into space from his apartment. Thanks very much. Now let me close by saying, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Apparently that helps. I don't, I'm not sure how, but I'm sure in the uh, YouTube algorithm, it's, it's a positive. And uh, if you want to see more, subscribe. And I do have a Patreon account. So if you want to support my work, uh, I put the link in the, the, uh, in the comments below. But please to consider it. It's really cheap. It's like it's the, the least expensive thing you'll buy today. Um, and uh, I would appreciate it very, very much. Thank you for listening.